Those vegan guys. I thank you. Well, hello there. I'm Paul. I'm Jason. And together we are Those, Those Vegan, vegan guys. guys. Happy World Vegan Day, everybody. If you're watching this on World Vegan Day. Yes. Yes, World Vegan Day is uh, this year, 2020, Sunday, November the 1st. Um, and some people also celebrate World Vegan Month. Mm hmm Yeah, for the whole of November. It's just a time to talk about the the pros. Yeah. You know, of being vegan to kind of help support each other for those people who are considering it. Um, and there's a lot of positives to talk about. What we've done is we've come up with our own little top ten list, top ten reasons to be vegan. So we're going to sit here. With a brew, with a nice cup of coffee, and go through the top ten reasons to be vegan in no particular order. It's very important to, even though we've written them in a list of one to ten. Let's just say they're they're all as important as each other. Yeah, aren't they? Yeah. It's just that we've, you know. So, number one, the animals, of course. The animals, yeah. It's it's always gonna be. Um, a big reason why a lot of people get on this journey because they suddenly and it can be for a million different reasons they suddenly out of nowhere make the connection mm -hmm. and it's hard we get it we completely get how hard it is to make that connection um, Jason and I were vegetarian for many years before we became vegan mm -hmm. uh, and so if you're interested in how that journey happened for us um, I'll put our video about our journey uh, up there because it's quite an interesting look into you know how how and why we switched uh, to vegan um, seven years ago yeah yeah but it's it's got to be about the animals it has to be about the animals it's estimated that anywhere between 56 and 90 billion land animals per year are raised and bred for sl bred and raised for slaughter mm -hmm. and what a lot of people don't know is that most of the animals that are used in animal agriculture are forcefully bred mm -hmm. yes you good know, point it, it's not a, a, a natural process they're not left to mate in a field mm -hmm. you know semen is extracted from male animals yeah. and inseminated into female animals mm -hmm. whose babies are taken away it's yeah it is an horrific Industry. process it, it, yeah it's horrible what we do to animals and let's just take the second as well to dispel the myth I mean that kind of dispels the myth right there is you know when uh, you know daft comments like oh well if we didn't eat animals they'd take over the world we'd have cows living in the streets and if, if we didn't eat animals we wouldn't be forcefully breeding them as aggressively as we are and if they were left to just breed naturally and roam the earth in fields of grass and uh, there'd be far less of them, mm -hmm. far less of them. Um, which brings us on to point number two, the animals. Because what we get a lot of the time as vegans is we get um, uh, meat eaters who are defensive of their own lifestyles and yep. that's understandable we all have egos we all defend our egos aggressively sometimes mm -hmm. unless you can actually question yourself and say hang on a minute what exactly am I defending here but one of the things that gets thrown out a lot is there are so many tiny animals killed uh, because of harvesting crops um, so you vegans have got blood on your hands as well so firstly, it's important to note that there is actually uh, a vegan um, definition. And we're going to put that on the screen here now. But the really important part is as far as is possible and practicable. Yes. Yes. Definitely. So we understand, obviously, what agriculture does we understand the processes of it. I think most people have got some idea. Mm -hmm. So we can, although we can appreciate the, the comments and we understand where the comments come from, like Paul said, um, you know, we've got to also contend with the fact that the vast amount of that crop is being fed in some way, shape or form to animals that are being bred for slaughter. So it all intrinsically links in, doesn't it? Yeah. 
So way more, for example, let's just take soy as one crop. Way more soy is grown on earth to feed to animals, to fatten them up for slaughter than is used for humans. In fact, if the soy grown on earth was given to humans, it would end world starvation immediately. You, you, there are 10, 20 times more animals on earth than there are humans at any one point and they're being fed and fattened up and drinking water and eating food just to end up on your plate. Cut out the middleman. Eat the soy. So yeah, far more small animals are killed harvesting crops to feed to animals for meat eaters than could ever be used for the vegans of the world. Number three, empathy and compassion. Such important things to instill into young humans to be able to see life from someone else's perspective, to be able to walk in somebody else's shoes, to understand that your actions are having a consequence on the life of this being. That's all empathy and compassion and they are crucial traits and, and traits that have been very much suppressed in us as humans now because we live in a very selfish materialistic world fair let's get rich let it, it and it's like mm, let's just bake things with our neighbors and <laughs> grow crops together and have cider parties let's uh, also acknowledge the fact that in today's society we find it sometimes incredibly difficult to be um empathic and compassionate towards our fellow human beings mm -hmm. let alone um the the creatures that we share this glorious planet with absolutely so you know not that i would necessarily advise it but an analogy i use sometimes is uh, and we've talked about this before when you see kids um like running and jumping at pigeons it's like well if you run and jump at a child they suddenly make that connection like oh that scared me yeah, that's exactly how the pigeon felt when you scared the pigeon. It's one of the things. Those that, little simple yeah. little joining those dots up from a young age and making that connection, that the empathic link um, with with the creatures of, of the world and and the, and the planet. And it's an easy thing to do, and it's one thing that's always bothered me about um, uh, parents. To be honest, the fact that they let their children run at birds when they're mm -hmm. um, in the town centre or whatever and it's so rare would you see someone say you shouldn't do that sweetheart because you're really big and they're very small and you're scaring them imagine if something very big ran at you mm -hmm. would you be scared it just takes a minute doesn't it yeah it yeah. just takes a moment and sort of similar to our short film that we made be the change is that that whole thing of i'm gonna link that up there because it was jason's idea and he pretty much wrote scripts for it i just did the voiceover for it i think i made one tweet yeah in the in the scripts but jason put it all together and it was uh it was a, a a really nice little thing that we wanted to put out there in the world be the change but the connection is those uh that family that have maybe their child has just run at, run at a flock of uh pigeons chilling out walking around and terrified them that equally within 10 minutes they might leave the shopping center go to the local park and feed the ducks be the change. Just like a parent taking their child to a petting zoo and then calling it McDonald's on the way home. Yeah, classic. It, it's, it's that whole disconnect, isn't it? Mm -hmm. By the way, if you're wondering, uh, why does this guy have uh, teeth missing on this side? I, um, I suffer from something called Bruxism. Um, it's a family trait, which is grinding and clenching during sleep, which I now have under control, however, this tooth was the last one that came out the other day um, and I think that might be it now. So partial denture, here I come. Nothing to do with veganism, just, you know, I wanted to make that clear. Because people will be like, look at him. He's got no teeth. He's got no teeth, he's horrible. <laughs> Bruxism, darling. Down to earth veganism on the reg. <laughs> Number four, health. Some people have actually re uh, reversed their diabetes by becoming vegan. We highly recommend watching a documentary called Forks All Over Knives and 
what the health yeah uh, they're both great documentaries to uh, to watch but people have shed pounds by becoming vegan um, they, they feel more energetic they have you know just more energy less brain fog um, uh, and a, a lot of people, particularly since the documentary Game Changers, yes. uh, wanted to become vegan for the health reasons. Um, do it. Don't forget the planet or the animals though, will yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. And let's also just also bust the myth, myth while we're on this subject. It's also very, very easy to be an unhealthy vegan and to eat vegan junk food because there's so much awesome vegan junk food out there. Too much. So, um, you know, in equal measure, um, you know, don't think that you are jumping on the vegan journey um, purely from a health perspective and that it's going to suddenly just change, the, change your world in terms of your health and your weight management because it's not always the case. Yeah, I mean, you've still got to watch what you eat. Yeah. You know, as you do with anything. Yeah. Uh, number five climate change uh, we've just been reading news here we sit in uh, on the 1st of November 2020 just been hearing news that the Greenland ice uh, sheet isn't forming like it normally would mm -hmm. at this point um, got people very worried yeah and you know all the carving situations in um, Antarctica and other places where huge bodies of ice some the size of Manhattan are breaking away from the ice shelf mm -hmm. and going out there into the into the ocean it only takes a one meter rise in the sea for life on earth to change dramatically for everybody and for thousands and thousands and thousands possibly millions mm -hmm. of homes towns and cities to be gone and they keep warning us about this and we've got the beautiful Greta Greta thank you for the work you do mm -hmm. for the passion you hold for the intelligence you portray um, you go girl this is such an important issue and it's being swept under the carpet constantly by people who are invested in oil and gas and coal these fossil fuels that we are digging up from the bowels of the earth that we're drilling down so far and causing mini earthquakes and you know uh, and there is wind and solar available to us uh, and it's better than it's ever been mm -hmm. um, it's changing it is changing and it's not all doom and gloom but as we often say it's not shifting quick enough yeah. these archaic industries that have dominated the world for so so very long those same companies now they are fully aware of 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 the technology that's available so, and yeah. and they know they're in a position to invest in it and they're still receiving subsidies yeah, and they're investing you know in why? the new technology it's because the, it's like while there is something yeah. there to sell of course they will continue to suck it up out of the earth yeah. and sell it to you because you're willing to buy it and it, it's, it leads us on very, very nicely <clears throat> to the next two points. <clears throat> Can I just say one last of thing? Course, on I'm it? sorry, Jess. Um, just with regards to those industries in general, people watching might be thinking very similar to how we think sometimes, which is scientists have been telling us about this for 20 years. Longer. We're seeing global extinction of species mm. like we have never seen before. The average person might be thinking, but what can I do to positively impact on that? I'm already recycling, I'm doing the best I can, I'm aware of my carbon footprint. Shall we say it together? Well, I was gonna... What you can do. Yeah. Go, Go vegan. vegan. Or at the very least, start switching stuff out and reduce your dairy and your meat consumption. Start that, dip that toe in the water. So yeah, there you go. Number six. <sighs> Future, Future pandemics. pandemics. We're in a global pandemic right now uh, with COVID-19. In England, we are uh, on this, in three days time, we're back in national lockdown for a month until December. It's already being discussed that it may extend mm -hmm. beyond December. And this has all been caused by humans and animals. Just like SARS, MERS, H1N1 
and so many other diseases that have jumped from animals to humans and yeah. they're zoonotic diseases yeah. they're called and they are the worst kind because they mutate they mutate in the animals they find a way to jump to humans and here we are with hundreds of thousands of people around the world dead millions infected millions more locked in our homes unable to live and see our friends and hug our families and this has all been caused by humans consuming animals specifically don't yeah. don't trick yourself in yeah but i'd never eat that animal because we'd never eat the animals you eat so you know there's always a kind yeah. of there doesn't like, it's easy to deflect well i'd never eat that yeah there isn't a distinction there isn't a distinction and no matter how much people try to tell themselves that there is there really isn't a distinction because when it comes to these types of diseases when it comes to these viruses we've been we've seen it time and time again we need to desperately learn from history because they've come from cows and pigs yeah. and chickens and let's not even get onto the subject of antibiotic resistance, mm -hmm. which is another terrifying concept. Um, but just in general, yes, one of the massive reasons to go vegan now or get on this journey is to stop future pandemics. I think it's important that we we elaborate on that a little bit about the... Um, uh, the antibiotic resistance. Yeah, yeah, because antibiotics are given to animals in factory farms in general to stop them from becoming ill so that they can be used for me why why do they have to give them antibiotics to stop them from being ill is it something to do with the horrific conditions that they're kept in mm -hmm. it's a horrible horrible cycle of abuse yeah. the antibiotics are going into these animals people are consuming these animals lo and behold our human antibiotic resistance is reduced to the point where in the not too distant future this stuff isn't going to work for us anymore it will be effective and a, a huge part of that is animal consumption yeah so that was kind of 6.5 yes <laughs> yeah 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 uh number seven future generations man we've got to think about the kids is there's a there's a beautiful uh, old saying um that uh, being a, a being a real genuine human is being able to plant trees you know you will never sit under and I think that's so crucial to to constantly keep our kids and their kids in mind what kind of world do we want to leave for them I'd like the younger generation to be able to look back on my life and say he gave a shit this is a person actually cared about my future and um, took action to make my future better yeah and really it, it is so important vitally important let's let's all do that I mean it's almost kind of a, uh, a funny uh, a funny sort of meme like will somebody please think of the children <laughs> but you really must tr uh, please think of the think of the kids because it's, it's not about the Nike trainers or the Adidas tracksuit or the 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 iPad or the that is all irrelevant stuff it's about leaving them a safe and secure planet to live on with empathy and compassion and love and fellowship yeah it really is. I don't think we need to say any more on that, really. It's like, you know, it's right up there. Like we said right at the start, this list is, um, you know, it's not in any particular order, but definitely the kids have got to be up there, haven't they? Of course they have. Without a doubt. Well, yeah, as he just said, no particular order, but these are ten important reasons to be vegan. Uh, number eight, the planet. We've only got one. She is beautiful. I've seen such corners of her that have, that have brought me to tears. They've been so beautiful. And yet we dig and we scourge and we mine and we pump and we filth and we chop down trees and we really don't seem to care. It's like living in an apartment block where people urinate and defecate in the elevator and in the in the corridors because nobody cares 
Um, and you know this this beautiful planet is very very fragile she's strong but she's very fragile hence species going extinct hence forest fires still raging through america now destroying homes and acre upon acre upon acre of beautiful land and killing animals uh, and, and floods and earthquakes and we have an impact on all of this but it links straight back to point number five climate change we are contributing so much to the continued melting of the ice caps mm -hmm. to the continued greenhouse gas emissions and we're gonna lose it the planet is screaming out for us to stop and has been screaming out for a long long time we've got the systems we've got the brains we are smart, we're a smart species when we want to be. We've got everything we need in play right now, just about to turn that corner and head in a positive direction and reverse some of this stuff and we're simply not doing it. So the planet, we've got to think about it every day, constantly. We are a rock revolving around a golden sun. We are seven billion children rolled into one. So when I hear about the hole in the sky, salt water wells in my eyes. Julian, that was a lovely song, Julian Lennon. Beautiful. Number nine, deliciousness. My God, it's good being vegan. I mean, when we first went vegan, I was like, oh, I've got Swathen and Barrett. Oh, there's a beef style pasta. I'll have that. <laughs> Two big boiled carrots on the plate. <laughs> few new potatoes that's it we're vegan now uh, but I mean that was seven years ago and since then the incredible array of fantastic alternatives now available in supermarkets can we just dispel this myth by the way we didn't go vegan because we didn't like the taste of meat therefore if somebody can take a plant and make it look and taste like a sausage I'm gonna eat that sausage I'm gonna eat that steak that pie, Gonna eat that, it up. that bacon, right? Good. That. So it's please, please learn that because it is a question that we get boringly asked a lot. Why would you want to eat something that looks and tastes like meat if you're a vegan? That was Darren. Here's Karen. Why would you want to play computer games, killing people when you could just go out in the street and do it, Darren? Cause that beat me a murderer, Karen. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm just wondering whether we we'll need to put subtitles on that for some of our more <laughs> glo our global audience. Just put the meme up. Yeah, put but the meme up. It's the best time ever to to go vegan. It is. The, I mean, it the last really couple of is. years, especially, there is so much choice out there now, and particularly want to just hit upon one uh, psychological little thing which we've talked about before is as we are seeing more and more cruelty-free vegan options on those shelves in those cafes and restaurants. The dilemma for the person who is the meat eater is why would they choose the cruelty? the death murder option versus the cruelty free vegan option. And I know that sounds really dramatic and some people might find that triggering, but how, if, if, if you could tell us how else to say it, because slaughter is a convenient word that's been used and it's been minimized, but it means slaughter, slaughter house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so know the, what I mean? the psychology around that is really interesting, and I'm, I'm liking that there's so much choice on the shelves now. Because you know what? Even going into somewhere like Greg's now for a, a, for a very quick uh, lunch turnaround and grabbing, you know, grabbing a pastry, you're presented with a vegan option. So the only reason that you're picking the slaughtered animal version is because of your perceived taste buds. You, you're going off your taste, or some people are going off taste alone, purely. So, is your taste more important than the life of an animal that has no choice in its own demise? And we go right back to the very start. The try, animals. try the vegan stuff because it's delicious. Do try it because I mean, uh, 
my mum and dad in that. Jay's mum and dad are now eating several yeah, switched vegan a lot of stuff. items. Um, my mum is eating quite a few vegan items uh, because we buy them. We bought them for them at first. Try this. Now, now they buy them themselves or ask us to get them yeah. for them. Yeah. Um, and we do not believe, like, unfortunately, there is a small amount of people out there who believe that what, what we would say is congratulations, well done, it's great that you're eating some vegan options. People would call us apologists. Mm. Um, we just believe in celebrating any small moves people make because each small move, each small move leads to the place where they may become vegan. Yeah. And it's important for us to support and encourage that. Yeah, the people are buying more delicious, awesome vegan food and that other horrible industry is slowly, slowly, slowly grinding to a halt. Um, and we're seeing it, we're seeing it, particularly in the dairy industry. Yeah. Dairy is scared. Dairy is scared of what's going on, and rightly so. The industry needs to be deleted. It needs to be gone yeah, forever. I mean, it's probably one of the worst industries, um, considering uh, look into it. Yeah. Which we're going to get onto actually. We can touch on that with our uh, our number ten in a second. Yeah, yeah. But number nine is deliciousness, and oh my goodness, <laughs> you know, check out our uh, our collection of, of recipes that this wonderful man cooks on the reg. Um, it doesn't have to be difficult. I'll put the list up there yeah. uh, of of our uh, vegan recipes playlist. Um, but we also have, and you may have already seen a banner for it. Uh, our uh, first free ebook, Down to Earth Vegan, which is specifically for people who are um, uh, about to jump into the journey. Although many established vegans have downloaded it and said I found something really helpful in that, actually, Paul. So um, it's free, it's downloadable from thoseveganguys.com. It's full of really interesting links and resources and lots of recipes and links to other vegan youtubers vegan organizations such as the vegan society which is a gold mine um so yeah please consider downloading that and if you can make a donation do but it's it's free number 10 meat and dairy are gross i mean they really are gross it's you know dairy example Jack off a bull, collect the semen, put your arm up the bum of a cow to stimulate the vagina so that you can inject the semen, get her pregnant, wait nine months, take the baby away, kill it for veal, and then continue pumping the milk so that the cow's body is tricked into the suckling sensation. Just like, it's exactly the same as it would be with a human. They make you pregnant, take your baby away, and then put pumps on your tits. And you're forced to give milk every day, every single day. It's an horrific industry. Yeah, and I think, I think the thing that people are most shocked and surprised by, because we are so very rarely exposed we don't expose ourselves to this information, but it is out there. When you visually get a chance to take in the scale, the sheer scale of the dairy industry. I mean, the, the, the meat industry is horrific. We've already talked about that. But the scale of the dairy industry, when you look at these massive, massive acres and acres and these little calves that are just there waiting a no mother, the desperation, Sorry. and also most people don't see this stuff either, but I've seen it a few times and it breaks me every time I see it. When you see a calf taken away from its mother and you see that mother chasing after it, um, it's horrific. It's horrible. Um, and if you're going back to what we talked about before around empathy, empathy right there, any human being looking at that, uh, looking at that mother chasing their, their kid down a field, uh, and cannot empathise with that. Um, and yet we've still got the British government um, and, and those horrific people in power voting that animals uh, don't feel pain mm -hmm. um, and they don't have emotions, which is ludicrous. So yeah. Go to, go to a pig safe, look into the eyes of a pig as the truck is just about to go into the slaughterhouse. 
Yeah. Men tell me they don't feel anything. But it's absolutely gross. I mean, you are, you know, people don't talk about this stuff very often and it is pretty horrific to acknowledge, but you're consuming animal feces, you're consuming pus, blood, bile, all kinds of horrific stuff. They allow um, pus in dairy, dairy milk. There's a percentage, yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. there, that's, uh, that's allowed that's un acceptable. under, I think, under EU well, regulations. Well, the, the poor cow's teats are covered in little sores and everything yeah. because the baby's antiseptic mouth isn't there. Yeah. To, you know, it's just machinery and it might be sterilised, but it's, it's, it's all absolutely horrific. And I think the crux of the matter is there's no need for it. No can still eat all these wonderful flavors and textures and, and know that nothing you're consuming is uh, uh, causing suffering to an animal or any other being that is the positive so there are our top 10 reasons to be vegan and this was our way of marking world vegan day and the start of world vegan month uh, just to you know mark the moment and say we're here where vegs get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of that the, that the hubster just said. And uh, and also just hopefully, um, maybe some of this stuff will stick with you. If you're watching and you're already vegan, then round of applause to you, you're awesome. Um, but for people who are watching this who are uh, veggie or considering starting to switch stuff out, hope that this has helped. And for the vegans who are watching, maybe it's given you a little bit of a card in your back pocket um, so that when somebody maybe asks you a tough question, you can kind of say, well, here's a bunch of reasons. I'm gonna whack another couple of videos uh, up there. Uh, if you don't know what up there means, by the way, the little eye with a circle at the top of the screen there uh, if you uh, if, if you can't see it just like touch the screen if you're on a device or put your mouse over the screen if you're on a desktop you'll see a little eye in a circle click that and all the videos that we're linking to within this video will appear either at the side of the screen or underneath the screen uh, and there's some stuff there worth watching so um, yeah and thank you so much for watching this. Happy World Vegan Day, husband. Yeah, happy World Vegan Day, husband. I love you. I love you. Mm. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Please share this video with your family and friends. We'll see you again very soon. And until then, please be excellent to yourselves and each other.